everything goes well. When you put it like that, it makes it sound like I'm always the one losing. <laughs> ah, perfect, you're all here. But there's an important commission I need your help with. Alright, I've got the time. Where are the goods? Well, it's not just goods this time. I need you to escort a tea merchant and their wares from Chaoyun Village to Liyue Harbor. A very important client has requested to meet with him. Sure. Uh, what's this merchant's address? We're here. Just bother the net. If the client's that important, then this must be a very crucial, very pressing commission, right? Um, of course, the sooner you complete it, the better. I would advise you to depart as soon as possible. But that's fine with me. Uh, fine by me. <laughs> All right, um, don't work too hard now, Long Joe. We'll set off then. Coffee with night time, that'll look cool. <laughs> there. I'll take a rain check on that. Well, my breadcrumbs aren't going away. Where am I supposed to go? <laughs> Ooh, let's go up this roof. Huh. Yeah. Huh. Oh! Hey! <laughs> So, this is what the world considers to be treasure. Hello! You must be the tea merchant heading to Liyue Harbor. We're here to escort you! Dad? <sighs> oh, so you're Gaming's father. It's nice to meet you. Psh, you knew. Just leave this delivery to him. Trust Paimon, he's got this in the bag. Gaming is super good at what he does. Everyone at the Secure Transport Agency says as much. Even the Ministry of Civil Affairs has nothing but good things to say about him. Seems like you've made some sort of name for yourself, at least. The... the goods are all in order? Yes, they're all here. Then let's get going. Uh, uh. Uh, a very important client has asked for you by name! You kinda have to come with us! doesn't know how we would explain ourselves if you just didn't show up. Plus, you'd be missing out on a huge money-making opportunity! I see. 
I suppose I will have to trouble you all to escort me, then. Let's go. I'm doing this story, you won't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> um, okay. Where we go? Um. Actually, going to you know actually escort him, not like this. Oh, let's teleport here. This place looks nice and open. Why don't you all rest here for a second? Why don't we rest by the inn? Huh? <laughs> what about you? You're not going to join us? I'm not tired. I'll keep watch. Oh, but... Just let him go. Then, did you know, Uncle Ip, that the flavor of these cakes changes depending on... Halt! Who goes there? It appears that one's <gasps> movements were overly conspicuous. Are, are they the ones who are supposed to be like bad guys? Oh my god. <laughs> Enough of your musings. Focus. Focus on the matter at hand. Present your exquisite ornaments at once. Oh, God. <laughs> Mass bandit, too. Indeed. Bring them forth readily and without protest. <laughs> ah! What do we do? It seems as if these two are acting alone. It won't be difficult to subdue them, but they might have something else waiting in store for Dad. The best way to keep him safe is... Leave this to me. I'll handle them. Traveler, Paimon, take my dad and the goods away from here. No, Kamin. It's too dangerous. This is what I do. A thorny foe, indeed. Let us depart and seek a target softer in blows and disposition. <laughs> Uh-uh. Don't think I'm gonna let you off so easily. Oh. <laughs> away. Let us away. <laughs> Coming! Don't worry. He's a great fighter. Paimon's even seen him take down a dozen or so treasure hoarders all by himself. But, Coming, I... If he had just stayed by my side and learned a family trait, 
He wouldn't have to put himself in such dangerous situations. We just have to trust him. Let's go on ahead. We'd best get away from here, in case there are other bandits in the area waiting in ambush. All is going to plan. <laughs> okay, we should be good to stop here. Um. Can we? Oh no, what is he doing here? I'm just laying a kite. <laughs> Don't tell me who Tom made that, right? <laughs> good sir, please listen to me. Reel in your line and leave this place as quickly as you can. There are bandits in the area. Bandits? Acting in broad daylight? Many people are catching a chill as of late. If your throat is bothering you, Paimon, perhaps some tea and rest are in order. Uh, no, no need, no need. Paimon's fine. She just uh, had some cake stuck in her throat. He must have figured it out by now. Is he just playing dumb on purpose? If there are indeed bandits in the area, then we should inform the Millilith at once. The guard that was escorting us is already on their tail. Oh? Well, if that's the case. Such matters are best left to those with the necessary expertise, wouldn't you agree? <sighs> I suppose you're right. If ordinary people like us got involved, it would only cause more trouble. Since we find ourselves otherwise unoccupied in this beautiful area, why don't we find a quiet place to relax while we wait for good news? Hmm. That would be lovely. The name sounds somewhat familiar. Ah, yes. That is the name of the Usho dancer who has been performing around Liyua Harbor recently, is it not? Oh, have you seen him perform? Indeed. I cannot help but admire his skill. He truly encapsulates the spirit of the Suani. Usho dancing has become more well known in Liyua Harbor recently. However, although performers are seeing budding success, they have no doubt had to face many hurdles along the way. One's not so easily understood by spectators such as ourselves. If you ask me, what truly deserves admiration is perseverance in the face of adversity. That is a rare attribute indeed. I have heard many of my acquaintances praise Gaming for his kind, selfless, and courageous disposition. To have a child so accomplished and upright you must be a very proud parent indeed, Uncle Yip. Uh, Uncle Yip. <laughs> Seems like Jean Lee has decided to skip the formalities. Uh, well, he... He's a hard worker. Yes. You should be sure to tell him you think that when he gets back. I... Your son is young yet. It's normal for someone his age to be a bit... hot-headed. It's understandable to find talking about such things in person difficult. If there's a particular sentiment you wish to convey, perhaps we could pass it along for you. No, no. 
It wouldn't be right to ask that of you. <sighs> this thing between us has festered for many years now. In truth, there are some things that simply aren't easy for us to talk through. I've been in the tea business for most of my life, and I always hoped my child would do the same. Otherwise, how would he support himself? Over the past few years, I heard how well he was doing for himself as a guard. How his work was taking him to farther and farther off places. I also heard that he never gave up on Wu Xiao dancing. It made me happy. But I was also worried. young, you can handle all that physically taxing work and manual labor. What young person isn't capable of making a living that way? My concern is what happens when you get old. Every time I get to thinking like that, I cannot help but be reinforced in the belief that I was right. That I was right not to give in. I often regret introducing him to Wu Xiu dancing as a kid. If I had known how things would turn out, I would have never taken him to see those performances in the first place. It is only natural for a parent to strive to send their child down the right path. No one would begrudge you that sentiment, Uncle E. You need not worry. You seem quite young, Mr. Zhang Li. Yet, you speak with such wisdom. Perhaps I have misjudged your age. Yes. Yes, you have. <laughs> <laughs> your words are too kind. Truth be told, one of my old friends has several grown daughters. Rather than fretting about their future, however, she prefers to let them find their own way. Is he talking about Clavertine? And she is more easygoing than I could ever be. I fear I lack such an open mind. Uh, oh, I meant to say earlier, there is no need to be so polite. Uh, feel free to call me by my name, Ipta. What's with that look? I think I've been, I said his name wrong. Sure. I, I can't tell. Yep, 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 yep. So, do you also think I fret too much, Mr. Zhongli? <sighs> That's not exactly what I was hoping to convey. Only a fool would ask a parent not to worry about their child. But think of it this way. Raising a child is not unlike flying a kite. Hold the string too tight, and it can no longer soar. As my friend once said, if your children are aiming for the stars, Clipping their wings will only cause them to come crashing down. You need to let out the line for a kite to soar. <sighs> it seems I was too stuck in my ways. You need not reproach your heart for caring. You simply need to loosen your hold a little. Indeed, with such a big heart, why not allocate the time you usually spend worrying about Gamin 
to the pursuit of other things, like going for a stroll, drinking tea, or taking in the scenery. You never know what surprises could be in store. Things can change in the blink of an eye. <laughs> the blink of an eye, you say? Do things change so quickly? Children grow up in quite the same way, do they not? Day after day, year after year, sometimes in the blink of an eye, but always when you least expect it. As a father, I'm sure you know that best. <laughs> yes, you can say that again. One second, Garmin was a kid. The next thing I knew, he was ready to fly the nest. Xiang Li certainly has a way with words. Dad, Traveler, Paimon. Good, you're all here. Oh, and Mr. Zhongli from the Wangsheng Funeral Parlor? You're here too? <laughs> A fated meeting indeed. We were just enjoying some pleasant conversation. Uh, <clears throat> is everything resolved? Well, you could say that. What does that mean? Traveler, Paimon, come with me. I need to talk to you. Hmm. Uh? Oh, okay. I'll come right out and say it. Those two bandits, you sent them, didn't you? Can't look me in the eye, huh? Guess I'm right then. Okay, but how did you know? At first, their mannerisms seemed a bit stilted. But once I got close, it was obvious that they possessed great skills. I was right on their tail, and it should have taken only a few steps to catch up to them, yet somehow, I was never able to close that distance. People with that level of skill would have gone about things differently from the start, like sneaking up on us while we were distracted. Unless, of course, their real motive was to lure me away from the group all along. Wow, you're pretty quick on the uptake. I just have a lot of experience. I've dealt with many a ruthless bandit in my time, but I've never seen ones like them. In the end, I told them they would make good guards if they ever wanted to get back on the straight and narrow, and that they could hang out with me in Li Yue Harbor anytime. Uh, you ever consider you might be a little too good at making friends? <laughs> I'm guessing you guys were trying to help resolve things between my dad and me? Yeah... <sighs> I appreciate it, I, I really do. But this conflict between us has been going on for a long time. Even if those two were real bandits and I was able to subdue them and show them what I was capable of, it, it wouldn't change anything. You've seen the way he talks to me. It's not like that at all! Your dad really cares about you. You should see the way he talks about you when you're not around. Zhang Li was talking things through with him and he nearly agreed to let it go. Pretty sure my dad just makes fun of me when I'm not around. <sighs> I don't know what it's like to have a caring father. You don't believe us? <laughs> he won't let it go. He can say as much as he wants to other people, but he won't talk to me. Just ask I'm my other two brothers. They'd probably say the same thing. And you? Will you talk to him? Oh. You told us you wanted to prove yourself to your dad. Why don't you tell him about all the hard work you've done these past few years? Will that even do anything? I'm not sure talking is enough. Yeah, if I talked to my dad, he'd either laugh at me or tell me to shut up. You won't know unless you try! Just like how you won't know if something is delicious unless you taste it! Listen to us. It's time to put these people's skills to good use. You can make friends with anyone, so why not your dad? No, it's not that easy. <laughs> good luck, I'll be rooting for you. <laughs> it won't hurt to try. It would. <laughs> for me, anyway. <laughs> I'll do my best.
<laughs> you are very knowledgeable, Mr. Zhongli. I'm impressed. Despite my being in the tea industry for several decades, it seems, I still have much to learn about the art of tea tasting. You flatter me. It was nothing but a few humble musings. How much tea have you drank since we've been gone? It's not like it was alcohol. <laughs> <laughs> Ip Doc and I have found many a common interest. Our friendship, much like a cup of tea, seems to grow stronger the longer it has to steep. Well said, Mr. Zhongli. Gaming, Mr. Zhongli is very knowledgeable. You should take the opportunity to learn from people like him when you're in the city. Huh? Oh, uh... Of course. Ahem. <clears throat> Zhongli? <laughs> I have very much enjoyed our conversation, Ifdak, but I, unfortunately, have some unfinished funeral parlor business to attend to. That is unfortunate. <laughs> oh, I, I hope I didn't keep you. My apologies for taking up so much of your time, Mr. Zhongli. No need to stay on my account. When you're less busy, let's find the time to meet. I'll treat you to dim sum. It would be an honor. We'll see you up, Zhongli. You two have a nice chat, alright? Good luck. Oh. Leave the tea, salt, and talk to Zhongli. Where is he? Where is he? I figured I'd see him, like, right away, <laughs> but maybe he's not actually showing. I have to get close enough to it. I don't even see the gold bell. There it is. <laughs> Thanks for helping us talk things through with Uncle Ip. Good thing you were able to pick up on what we were putting down. Did he? I'd like to know if that was true or not. I have been around the both of you for some time now. You could say I have a certain level of expertise in that regard. As for my role in the conversation, think nothing of it. I hardly did anything noteworthy. <laughs> you never change, do you? Uh, why did you have us walk all this way? Paimon thought we just had to go far enough to be out of earshot. A friend approaches. Hello. So, you're here too? Well, it is very close to the inn. I've been here the whole time. <laughs> A ghostly kite. Could that elusive director who be coming to Wangshu Inn once again? <laughs> what is she doing here? Oh, I suppose it matters not. Given her relationship with Rex, well, Jean Li, I might as well go pay my respects. It's you. I thought you were Director Who. Ah, your arrival is most fortuitous. Do you want to try out this new gadget? The addition of the power source makes the takeoff more stable. It's just that... He seems quite immersed in the study of this device. I barely hear him. Okay, I hope I'm not going to cut him off. I fear it's almost too stable. It completely negates the pleasure of seeing one's kite sway with the wind. It's a bit of a shame. In truth, I'm here because Director Hu dispatched me to purchase some items in preparation for Lantern Rite. I see. Much like she does every year. Much like she'll do next year, I would imagine. Hmm. Ugh. Am I wrong? Or has she once again sent you out to buy, what is it, sesame oil or something? While we're on the subject, I do wonder why she is so obsessed with using sesame oil in the preparation of mixed vegetable dishes for lantern rite. A recommendation from Shang Ling, perhaps. What do you think, Xiao? I've only met Director Hu a few times. I'm hardly the best person to ask. 
Ah, and is that not a sign that you should visit Wang Sheng Funeral Parlor more often? It wouldn't hurt to grace the parlor with your presence now and again, when you are otherwise unoccupied. This one here is a traditional kite, one without any equipped mechanical device. Director Hu tasked me with studying the differences between the two to determine which one is of greater merit. Many hands make light work. Perhaps you could test out the other kite for me? All right. I have made my comparisons. If speed is what you're after, the mechanical kite is the better choice. Wonderful. I shall pass that information along to Director Hu. I'll leave these two kites with you. Perhaps you can find a few friends with which to partake in the activity. You might find it to be an enjoyable use of your time. Oh, uh, wait. Who enjoys kite flying? Well, I would imagine someone of your talent and wisdom is more than capable of finding out. So, you were testing out the kites for Hu Tao and even Rob Xiao into doing it for you? Kinda didn't ask earlier because the situation was uh, awkward. I would hardly say I roped Xiao into anything. I simply sought the help of a friend. Besides, we did the testing together. Uh, seems like our pool of competitors is growing. The competition's not the important thing right now. Doesn't matter, we're going to win either way. <laughs> Do you like kite flying, Xiao? I suppose I neither like nor dislike it. Although, watching a kite gradually ascend into the sky does bring me a certain peace of mind. Perhaps they're a bit like shell lanterns in that way. Hmm. Kite flying is also a pleasant form of relaxation. Have you ever thought about making a kite shell? Cloud Retainer taught us how. We can teach you if you want. There's no need. Minogius was the only Yaksha among us who had an interest in matters of ornamentation and design. When Lantern Rite is over, come find me near Pervasi's temple if you have the time. Sure, absolutely. Mm. It's getting late. I should go inform Director Hu of our findings. How's she been, by the way? Be sure to say hi to her for us! The last time I spoke to her, she mentioned that she would be visiting Chaoying Village in a few days. If you have the time, perhaps you could also make the trip. If you happen to run into her, you can pass along your regards in person. I'll keep that in mind. Take care, Xiang Li. See you later! See you next time. Uh... They haven't talked yet? <sighs> Come in. Uh, uh, you can go first. I don't have anything to say. Then I'll go. I still don't want to leave Liyue Harbor. Oh. I can't say I support that decision, but... <sighs> hey, let me finish before you get all worked up. Her, sit. You must be tired from your journey. Shall I pour you a cup of tea? Or would you prefer something else to drink? No need. I'm not tired. They're gone, Master. Perfect. The time is nigh for us to make an appearance. Do you remember the plan when recounted to you? Yes, Master. We aim to give them a demonstration of familial love. <laughs> so I'll have whatever you are having. All right. What are Auntie Xin Yun and Shan Hao doing here? Just how many people are involved in this scheme? I suppose all I can do is just take a seat and see what happens. <laughs> Perfect. I just so happened to have bought some Songlo tea recently. It's quite the delectable variety. Or it would be if one has not been forced to drink it every day in the hopes of whittling down one's considerable stash. One has more than had one's fill already. 
<laughs> oh, forget it. Such thoughts detract from the present need to keep up the conversation. Hmm. Has work been busy during the holiday season? Do you need my help with anything? Uh, drunk guests can sometimes cause trouble. But I deal with them as you taught me. By pinning their heads against the table. <laughs> what? Uh? <laughs> Are you Xian Yun and Shen Ke serious right now? <laughs> oh dear. While one was busy orchestrating this act, one seems to have forgotten about Shen He's various eccentricities. Yeah, my thought exactly. <laughs> What, what, uh, what I meant to ask was, have you made any new friends? We live so far from each other, it would be a great comfort to me to know you were surrounded by good companions. <sighs> you already know of my past circumstances. <sighs> Recently, I've been conversing with Guoba in the kitchen at night. Guoba can't talk, but his companionship is a comfort. The poor child. Her one friend can't even talk. <laughs> I guess maybe Gaming is not doing so bad after all. Perhaps I've been too hard on him. <laughs> Let's move on, shall we? Do you have any plans for today, Shen He? How about we do something fun? That sounds about right. Take her to do something fun, and perhaps she'll loosen up a bit. Like we used to do when we would carry stones up and down the mountain from dawn until dusk, picking herbs to eat for dinner along the way? If that is what you ask of me, then that is what I shall do. <laughs> Dad, uh, here. Have some tea. Or, or no, wait. Let's not have any just yet. <laughs> <coughs> uh, yeah. Oh, I simply can't listen to that any longer. <laughs> Coming. I'd like to finish what I was trying to say before. I don't support your decision to stay in Liyue Harbor. Because living there is too hard on you. If you come home... There will be people to help you. I'm not saying we have to live under the same roof. I know our personalities are too similar to avoid butting heads. But you'll have your entire family around you. Your aunts, uncles, they'll all do whatever they can to help. You could get a less taxing job, and we could... We could grab dim sum together from time to time. Huh. I didn't know dim sum was such an important affair, Master. Shh. Just think about it, okay? You don't have to decide now. Dad really has changed a lot. He would never have said these things to me before. Well, I thought I couldn't hear Zhao. <laughs> but I... I'm too scared to turn the sound up, though. Thank you. Dad. <laughs> it's been long enough, don't you think? Oh, I'm unsure hopes they've made up by now. Oh, they're drinking tea in silence. That's not a good sign. Did Shen Yun's plan not work after all? No. Uh, hey, you two! <laughs> I'm sorry we were gone for so long. We got to chatting with some friends and didn't realize how much time had passed. Perfect timing, actually. We seem to be just about done here. Yep, uh, let's go. I'll get the Vax. <sighs> Gaming has grown a lot taller, hasn't he?
Master, did I say something wrong earlier? I tried to go along with your questions, but when I saw how you and that man reacted, I started to wonder. Not at all. Certain unforeseen variables may have presented themselves along the way, but the outcome proved favorable. The plan was a success. Then I helped? Naturally. Your purity of spirit is one of your greatest strengths, Shenhe. You need not change who you are. Look, it's me and my mom. <laughs> not exactly, but it kind of reminded me of that. We used to go to, um, whenever we wanted to be hang out, we'd, um, my mom would want to go to a restaurant for breakfast or lunch. That was our special thing. Especially when she got old. <laughs> oh, um, I need to get closer, don't I? Yeah. all this way. My name is Charlotte, and I'm a reporter from Fontaine. You can find me writing for the Steambird. I invited you here not just to purchase your fine tea, but also with the hope that you might be willing to sit down for a short interview. What do you say? An interview? To advertise my teas? I suppose you could think of it that way. We Fontanians are big tea drinkers, too. The Fontaine Market. Then I'll need some time to adequately prepare. Perhaps we could sit down and discuss the questions you intend to ask in advance. Of course, of course! Please follow me! Is this person also involved in your plan? What do you think? She's a very important client. <laughs> and here I thought I had lots of connections. <sighs> I suppose I've been humbled. You sure know all kinds of cool and important people. I do, don't I? <laughs> Over here! Yoo-hoo! Over here! Uh-huh. What? Auntie Shen Yun? She probably wants to talk about the next phase of the plan. Let's go while your dad is still distracted. I take it that all is going well? Don't worry, Shenyun. Everything is going according to plan. I knew it. I knew that was all an act earlier. Auntie Shenyun is really something. She was so determined to help me, she didn't even care about making herself and Shanghe appear foolish in front of my family. She truly knows how to look out for others. I still have a lot to learn. She didn't even care about making herself a generation foolish. <laughs> As for the next step, she probably would not agree with that. <laughs> I did not look like a fool. <laughs> oh no. What's wrong, Gummy? Don't tell me you're the ones footing the bill for all that tea. I can't let you do that. Fret not. Reimbursements will be made. Exactly. Think of it more as an investment, as Mi Wang would say. We pulled together the Mora so that Charlotte could place the order. She's gonna bring it back to the Steambird as a gift, as well as a sample of the regional specialty. Fontanians will probably fall in love with your dad's tea as soon as they lay their eyes on Charlotte's article. And once all the money from the new orders begin to roll in, getting our Mora back will be a piece of cake. Oh, okay. Business-related matters always seem to go over my head, but I refuse to let you all lose Mora on my behalf. I'll pay you back right now. We can talk about such matters at a later date. There are more important matters for you to consider at the moment. Are there not? Yes. I've been thinking about it the whole way here. I have an idea, but I'd hate to cause even more trouble for all of you. 
Hmm. That is for us to decide. Yeah, we're all friends here. Plus, we wouldn't be here if we didn't want to help, right? Just tell us about this idea of yours. Okay. Whew. So, it's like this. Since Xiao already tested out those kites for us, why don't we also go buy one of those mechanical thingamabobs or whatever they're called? We can attach it to our kite! I read it, it said it looked like they were both going to come out at the same time. Okay, that's good. Where am I going? Oh, over here. Huh. Hello again! Welcome back! I see you returned from your trip. I really do have to thank you for all your help from before. Thanks to you, my daughter was able to build a kite with her grandmother that very same day. She even wrote a long letter telling me how much she loved it. Oh, you should really be thinking about me, not us! Uh, I'll be sure to. And are you here to buy a kite? Please, take your pick. Oh, we already have a kite. We wanted to buy one of those, um, device thingies from Fontaine. Do you sell them separately? Ah. Uh, Yes. Here you go. Please, take it. Free of charge. The directions are in the box. It's not hard to install at all. Um, it doesn't feel right for us to just take it. Well, nor would it feel right for me to take your Mora. <laughs> Good luck in the kite flying competition. I'll be rooting for you. Alright then, thank you! It's done. Let's get down to business. Looks like we finished everything we needed to do. Let's find a good place and put this thing into the sky. The, the oh, what's light going on? Out. Did something happen? Uh, what should we do? Oh, should we get the mill with? <gasps> oh. <laughs>
Have I taken that many pictures already? Ugh, I need to load more film. You know what that feels like? <laughs> I think I'll head off now, if that's okay. Thank you, little girl. Do you want us to walk you back? No need, no need. Master is waiting for me right over there. Okay. I suppose I'll go first this time. Okay. Your performance. I've seen many wushu dances in my time, but I've got to admit, what you pulled off there was breathtaking. Wow. I... I never thought I'd live to hear you say that. You're serious about doing this professionally? A absolutely. I, I know it'll be difficult, but... Then it doesn't matter. What I mean to say is, of course it'll be difficult. But if that's your decision, if that's your dream, then it doesn't matter how difficult it is. As long as you put in the work, then any obstacle can be overcome in time. Really, when I was young, I also... <laughs> Actually... <laughs> How about we save that story of my past for another time? All I really want to say is... I've changed my mind. And much like this kite, you also deserve to soar to new heights. Dad... Son. Son? <laughs> Haven't heard that in a while. I bet you're wondering what's gotten into me saying all this. Well, um, <laughs> a little bit, yeah. Anyway, I know I've never found the chance to say this before, but... <clears throat> to me, Gamin, you've always been a great kid. <laughs> All right, that's everything I've got. Did you have something you wanted to say, or... Seeing the two 
of them talk things through like this really gives Paimon a sense of accomplishment. Yep, it was all because of you. Give yourself a cut back, Paimon. <laughs> now go. Over there, your friends are still waiting for you. Huh? But you came all this way. I'll be staying in Liyue Harbor for a bit longer. When you have time, we can grab them some together. Your treat, right? Dad, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> Go. <laughs> okay, then I'm off. See you soon. else you'd like to do? Hmm. I'd like to find and thank Auntie Xianyun, as well as everyone else who's helped me out. If everyone has time, maybe we could all get together and go fly a kite. I'll be able to sleep tonight. Mm -hmm. Oh, my conversation with Mr. Ip went really well. I've already sent the first draft of my article back to the Steambird. It's a piece that contains all the pertinent information while also telling a story. I'm quite proud of it. Oh, that reminds me. I should thank everyone who made this possible for me. Especially that spirited lady with those peculiar turns of phrase. <gasps> Miss Shenyun was her name, right? It was all thanks to your connections and creativity. I would have never thought I'd be able to bring such a special gift back to Fontaine with me. Oh, that? Yeah, interesting story. It was invented by a guy from Fontaine. His name is Ildison. He's always tinkering away at some mechanism or another. He's even asked the Steambird to write about his inventions on more than one occasion. I believe I have a direct quote from him about this particular one. It, ah, yes, here it is. The device is powered entirely by mechanical components without the need for any additional energy source. Basically, it's a manually operated cranking device. How high it can fly entirely depends on how much force you can exert. Combining this invention with a kite. What a great idea, right? This was my first time experiencing a foreign holiday in person. It was so exciting! The festive atmosphere, the contagious holiday spirit, the profound storied cultural traditions steeped in symbolism. Oh, I almost forgot. Kuching even gave me a kite with a poem on it that she wrote herself. It goes, Dreams are like paper kites. With them do our hopes take flight. Sailing high above the clouds, they yearn for something more profound. Yet try we may and try we might. A deeper truth waits in plain sight. Though we hang our hopes in skies abound, many joys lie on the ground. I want to include this poem in my special feature on Lantern Rite. I'm sure a lot of people will love it. Yep, and happy Lantern Rite to you. Given your present countenance, one presumes you are missing some old friends again. One cannot help but be reminded of them. Pray speak. Unburden yourself of these sentiments. One simply wishes Monogius were alive to witness such peace alongside us. He was so skilled in matters of craftsmanship. 
kite making would scarcely prove to be a test of his capabilities. Were he yet amongst the living, he could have opened a kite stall. One is certain it would have been an establishment rich not only in profit, but also esteem. And if, as in the past, he were unable to involve himself in matters of the mortal realm, we could sell the kites in his stead. When we finished, we could bring him back wine and partake in drink and good company. Mooncarver, those are now but fond moments in our memories. Indeed. The dead are gone, so, as the representatives of the living, let us take in the sights for a bit longer, if just for his sake. So, you're still a big fan of winter melon cake, then? Huh? Oh, <laughs> I guess you heard everything Paimon was saying, huh? <laughs> of course. She was talking about you. As your father, how could I not listen? Remember back when you were a kid, and you would sit on my shoulders to watch the Wuxiu dance? Oh. On our way back home, you would beg me to buy you some winter melon cake. We would only buy two at a time, but before long, we tried the winter melon cake from every vendor that street had to offer. There was also that one time you used your pocket money to treat me. Do you still remember? Yeah, I remember. That was the best winter melon cake I ever had. Let's go back sometime. The shop's still there, and... I remember the way. My treat, just like before. Are you sure? Absolutely. I'll probably have to look a guide up to see if I missed anything. Right. No, no, Although I can't really remember exactly where this place is. I think it's this one.
traveler. It's just as I thought, you stopped short of stepping into the city again. Being in the city isn't the only way for me to appreciate the lights and beauty of Lantern Rite. Look, Liyue Harbor lies just beyond this mountain. As long as I stand at this vantage point, I may freely behold the sights of all the kites slowly ascending into the sky. For me, that is enough. All right. I invited you here because there is something I would like to do. I want to release a shell lantern, and I'd like you to be there for it. Did you make it yourself? Yes. I apologize for its crude appearance. I have little skill in that regard. Oh no, it's amazing. You are very <laughs> kind, as usual. <laughs> All right. It's time. <sighs> As the shallow lantern slowly disappears into tranquil night sky, shallow expression softens. Traveler. Oh. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Is it out there? It's out there? No? No? <sighs> I don't get it. Is something wrong, Shanha? Tell me. Perhaps I can help. The color black doesn't get dirty easily. So I thought this outfit would be acceptable to wear to work. But Xiong Ling told me it was inappropriate. But inappropriate? How? She probably just meant the outfit isn't suitable for that particular environment and occasion. But for a festival gathering with friends, a nighttime stroll, or an important banquet, your outfit is more than appropriate, Shenha. So you're saying it's only something I should wear in front of important people. I suppose that's another way to think of it. <laughs> hmm. Uh, one may have won the kite flying competition, Yu Hong, but this prize should truly be reserved for another. You need not be so humble, honored Adeptus. Among all the kites, yours was quite literally a cut above the rest. Please accept this prize. You deserve it. Besides, I'm quite certain we owe a fair share of the success of this year's lantern rite to you. If you insist, then one can hardly continue to refuse. However, there is another matter with which one would ask your assistance. Of course. Hmm. One would be much obliged if you could distribute this case of Sunglo tea among the Millilith on duty. The security of the festivities rests entirely on their shoulders, after all. One presumes they could always benefit from something to invigorate their spirits. Cloud Retainer is so thoughtful and attentive to others' needs. I would expect nothing less of an esteemed adeptus such as herself. No, no, she just has far too much of it, and she just wants to get rid of it. <laughs> Understood. I'll get on that right away. <laughs> hmm. A fortuitous result indeed. One's tea surplus has hitherto resolved itself.
dreams. Feeble. You will regret this.
My pole arm doesn't distinguish friend from foe, and there's... planning on spending some time in Chaoying Village? We didn't have anything else to do today, right? Why don't we go have a look around? Maybe we'll run into her! Every person has somewhere to call home is naive. I got used to living in the mountains alongside the birds and beasts a long time ago.
Bueno. There's treasure up there. So, this is what the world considers to be treasure. Where am I going? Oh, I went to the wharf. <laughs> it's fine, it's fine. Too. Something about bull fruit and good vibes. <laughs> right? So Paimon wasn't just hearing things. Hmm, that voice sounds really familiar. Did it? I was trying to replace it and I couldn't. Well, we've got the time. Why don't we go check it out? Okay, let's go see what's up. Almonds, this, and cocoa paste, that. Sounds delicious, that's for sure. The lively voice invigorates your stuff, and you s send them out in no time. <laughs> what oh. are they doing here? Well, I guess it could have sounded like Navia. Navia, come on! Doesn't that hurt, that's for sure. <laughs> Well, if it isn't my dear partners. See, I told you that something good was going to happen during our travels today. I have to say, sometimes the Steambird's astrology column is spot on. It's just your lucky day. Are you guys also here to catch the festivities? Oh, and that reminds me. Happy Lantern Rite. Happy Lantern Rite. And to you. Counting, of course. We heard. That was you, right, Navia? <laughs> <laughs> oh, impressive. You could tell it was me from that far away. You've got good ears. That or your voice is just really loud. <laughs> <laughs> well, of course it is. After all, I'm a boss. Indeed. I suppose it's an asset. Sure is! Having loud voice is a handy tool when it comes to communication. Yeah, it does. Wait, wait, wait. That wasn't even Paimon's point. <laughs> Paimon just wants to know why you two were shouting from the top of this deserted mountain. Well, I don't think she was. <laughs> there was something about almonds, maybe? And buell fruit? Ooh, is it some sort of secret code? No, it's not a code. The words are meaningless. Perhaps, but the act of shouting was very meaningful indeed. That's just what mountain climbers do, right? After all the hard work it takes to make it to the top, as you stand on the summit looking out at the vast scenery, it's not easy to resist the urge to release those emotions. I see, so it's not what you're with shouting that matters, but the act of shouting itself. <laughs> exactly. You get me, partner. I was afraid that it would cause a disturbance, so I asked the locals around here, and they said it was fine. Apparently most hikers like to shout when they get to the top, so the locals are used to it by now. So, you see, it's not just me. I guess everyone shouts from the top of a mountain at some point in their life. Uh, speak for yourself. <laughs> when your 
you're stressed, don't you ever just get the urge to do something for no reason? Mm, not really. If I ever get stressed, I just go hunting. Oh, that's a pretty good way to relieve stress. Hmm. What I choose to hunt depends on my mood. Huh? Strike time on. Be ready. No. <laughs> um. <laughs> Anyway, why don't you two give it a try? <laughs> Shout anything you want. It's a real stress reliever. Hmm. As long as Paimon has clothes on her back and food in her belly, Paimon doesn't think there's any stress that needs relieving. And I prefer to keep things bottled up. <laughs> True. Oh. No one I bet anyway. you guys are just too embarrassed to let loose. <laughs> no need to be shy. Even Farina was shouting from the top of this mountain earlier. Who? Huh? Did Paimon hear that right? Farina's also here? In Chaoying Village? Believe in your ears. It is indeed as you heard. Actually, the reason we climbed this mountain in the first place was also because we heard the sound of shouting. Yes. We could just about make out someone yelling things like, Help me! And what should I do? So we hurried up here to check it out. <laughs> and what do you know? Miss Farina was standing right there, all red in the face. She practically sprinted back down the mountain the minute she saw us. <laughs> Sounds like something I would yell. Ah, that <laughs> reminds me. I believe what she actually said was, So help me, I will figure out what I should do about this script. <laughs> uh, so, you could actually hear what she was saying? Why didn't you say so earlier? I thought someone was really in trouble. I figured we would come check out the situation either way. Why not let her keep some privacy? Oh, seems like you caught Farina in the middle of some stress relief as well. She probably would have never thought... No, she definitely would have never thought she would run into anyone she knew all the way out here. Was she alone? I think so. We ran into Nervalette on the way here as well, but he was already on his way back, so they probably weren't together. But why was he there? What? Nervalette was here too? <laughs> so many people from Fontaine. What was he doing here? It couldn't have been for vacation. <laughs> I guess it's to taste the water. <laughs> I think it just might have been, actually. But apparently he only stayed for half a day before heading back. He's a very busy man. Hmm. Nevillette is not the type to take much time off. Taking even a half day for himself is already a huge step in the right direction. Didn't Charlotte publish an article on the Liyue tea industry recently? Maybe he was inspired to come buy some tea after reading that article. You know, just like you were. My situation is completely different. I'm here because I was asked to accompany you. The tea purchase is simply an added bonus of this location. Are you sure about that? <laughs> Two Fontanians in your tea drinking. <laughs> oh, it's not for me. I lost a bet with Ridesley, and now I have to buy him something. You made a bet? Seemed like a fitting gift. <laughs> it was just a spur-of-the-moment sort of bet. Ridesley gets really invested in that sort of thing. But he couldn't care less about what he wins in the end. You could give him mint plants that you plucked from the side of the road, and he wouldn't even mind. Uh, if only he was that easy going when it came to talking business. <laughs> in any case, I'm pretty sure the tea you bought is this region's specialty. What is it called again? Ah, uh, Nervalette even mentioned it earlier. Oh, um, actually I don't remember how this was said. Buy ten boxes, get half off? Yes. Yes, that's the one. You didn't really buy ten boxes, did you? Please, do I look like someone who would fall for that sort of marketing trap? Ah, that reminds me. You guys said you only came up here because you heard my voice, right? I hope it didn't put you out. You must have had other plans for the day. Oh, that's right, who tell? A few days ago, we heard that a friend was going to be in Chaoying Village, so we decided to come and see if we could run into her. Oh dear, we've been chatting for quite some time. I'm sorry for keeping you. No harm done, partner. 
<laughs> That's good. We should probably head out and look for Hutao. No need to stay on our account. We just got up here, so we're gonna stay around for a little longer. Hmm. Go and meet your friend. We can meet up in Chaoying Village later. Sounds reasonable to me. Sounds good. We're gonna head down the mountain then. See you later! What do I have to do to get you to yell from the top of this mountain? Name your price. You really want to hear it that bad, huh? I'm just curious is all. I have a feeling you'll say something amazing. <sighs> I will pass. I prefer to let actions speak louder than words. Okay. Huh. Huh. Treasure chest, treasure chest, treasure chest. Wait, wasn't there one over here? Adept eye treasures have special powers. Hmm. What about mortal ones? we were able to meet you both without prior arrangements must mean that this is quite the serendipitous meeting indeed uh -huh. oh so both of you are acquainted with the traveler in paimon then i have keenly felt the passage of time since our last meeting so many chums all in one place <laughs> <laughs> i'm pretty sure you didn't learn that one from me uh -um. <laughs> i must admit i am a bit surprised to see you here traveler but seeing as you're a hero who's been all over to that, it makes sense that you would be well-traveled and well-connected. Since we have found ourselves in each other's company within this fertile land, allow me to take this opportunity to wish you a happy Lantern Rite. Happy Lantern Rite. It appears you have been to Fontaine then. Given your proclivity to spread good deeds wherever you go, 
It's no surprise that you would make the acquaintance of a celebrity as illustrious and celebrated as Miss Farina. Uh, <laughs> that's quite high praise. What I mean to say is, you flatter me, Mr. Zhongli. Although I've built up a certain following within Fontaine, it is no reflection of strength or wisdom. I stand before you right now as nothing more than an ordinary traveler in search of beautiful scenery and creative inspiration. There is definitely more to Mr. Zhongli than meets the eye. I could tell as much from our conversation earlier. Given his breadth of knowledge on both academic and worldly matters, there's no way he hasn't heard about what happened in Fontaine. Is he just feigning ignorance for my benefit? Is he? No, no, no. Ay, yeah. You're no common tourist. I simply won't have you talk about yourself that way. Oh, does that mean Hu Tao also knows? You may not have heard, friends, but. Uh, um, Miss Hu Tao. Miss Farina is now one of my esteemed clients. Did you hear that, Paimon? Who? So she's Hu Tao's esteemed client. Okay, okay, you win. Hmm, guess Paimon will have to break into the hidden stash at the bottom of her shoe. <laughs> uh huh? What's this about winning something? Don't tell me. You two were placing bets on us. It was Paimon's idea. <laughs> oh, we just saw you guys standing on the side of the road and couldn't help but take guesses as to what you were talking about. Oh, I see. That means you, my friend, must have guessed that I was trying to promote my business to Miss Farina. Well, you know me, and I know you. <laughs> that I do, my friend. What was Paimon's guess then? Paimon thought Zhang Li was showing the newbie around. Ah, by newbie, you mean me, right? If that's the case, then Paimon's guess was also correct. Oh, that's right. Mr. Zhang Li was telling me about some great sightseeing spots in the area. <laughs> you see? Paimon was right too! Since both of our guesses were right, Fine, keep your secret stash then. Hey, don't be upset, traveler. How about this? You buy Paimon a bull, and Paimon will also buy you a bull. Uh, as for the third bull... Since I was the subject of the bet, perhaps it should go to me? You know, as a congratulations for the huge deal I just struck. I'll buy your bull and time anytime you want. <laughs> I was just joking. Anyway, I should be the one treating you. The funeral parlor is about to bring in quite the sum, after all. What's it even mean? Oh, <laughs> Paimon almost forgot to ask about the most important question. Did, I uh, something happen recently, Farina? Huh? What do you mean? Uh, well, you know, with you enlisting the services of Wangsheng Funeral Parlor and all. Oh, well... Yes. Really? Oh no. Paimon is so sorry for your loss. Although Paimon may have not known the person, please accept Paimon's deepest... Whoa, 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 it's not like that, Paimon. Huh? But Paimon just thought, since you hired the services of a funeral parlor and all... Hey, it's not that big of a stretch. Really, Paimon? It's not like you don't know me. Do I look like I know anyone who would ask me to coordinate their funeral? Not really. <laughs> Miss Hu Tao is simply helping prepare some props for my film. Not too long ago, I read a collection of horror stories from Li Wei. The content was spectacular! In fact, I still feel the need to sleep with the light on even now. Uh, <laughs> anyway, that's not the point. Now that Fontaine's biggest star has returned to the stage, I figured it's about time the industry enjoyed a breath of fresh air. 
You might even call it a breath of fresh tea air. Tea air. Tea air. Terror. Oh God. <laughs> hey, <laughs> that's pretty good. I'll have to remember that for my ad posters. I'm gonna spell it a little differently because I look weird. <laughs> oh, I'm on C's. That makes a lot of sense. So, did you come to Liyue just to enlist the services of Longchang Funeral Parlor? Well, not exactly. My original plan was to just relax and enjoy the sights. But then I ran into Miss Hu Tao and Mr. Zhang Li, and well, you know the rest. I suppose it was meant to be. It was a fated meeting indeed. Zhang Li sure loves his lofty turns of phrase. But if you ask me, it's all thanks to that man who stopped to ask for directions. <gasps> you telling me that Nouvellet met Zhang Li? <laughs> It's someone you know. Wanna take a guess? Let me see. It was new lit, wasn't it? <laughs> what? How did you guess that on your first try? <clears throat> Very impressive, my friend. Your guessing game is spot on today. Tell everyone about your encounter with Navi and Cloran at the top of the mountain. One look at the pitiful expression of Farina's face is enough to convince you to leave out the part about the shouting. <clears throat> I never thought Nouvellet would be the type to get lost. I'm sure he didn't get lost. <laughs> Even I was able to find my way to this place without any trouble. He was already getting ready to leave by the time I arrived. He just wanted to ask someone about the quickest way to get back to Fontaine. Yup, that's exactly what he asked. This area is full of mountains and rivers. It's normal to not know the fastest route. For him, though, swimming would probably be the fast route of them all? So, were you the one that pointed him in the right direction, Hotel? Of course. I'm also a guide of sorts, you know. So naturally, I also have a great sense of direction. If it is not the guide we want. <laughs> but, speaking of your friend... What about him? He doesn't get out much, does he? No. No, he doesn't. Ah, uh, no wonder. He was stiff as a board and way too polite. I would have never guessed he was here on vacation if you hadn't told me. <laughs> all in all, he was only here for half a day. I'm pretty sure he is the only one who would consider that to be a vacation. Yeah. Oh? This gentleman you speak of must keep a demanding schedule. Yes, and one of those part of the schedule is confronting you! <laughs> I'm sure he Eventually. does. You didn't see him, but he was dressed like he was about to attend some important meeting. It wasn't anything like what someone would wear on vacation. Is that so? Wait, you didn't see him, young lady? Unfortunately, no. And it's probably a good thing. At the time, it appeared as if Director Hu and Miss Farina were having quite the productive conversation. I know matters of business can take much discussion, so I decided to fetch some tea for them. What a shame. That gentleman seemed like a sophisticated sort of guy. I actually think you two would have hit it off. Is that so? Judging by how Jean Lee is acting and taking into consideration Nuvalet's true identity? Jean Lee have been avoiding him on purpose. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> oh, I see. <laughs> it is what it is. It's truly a pity. <laughs> <laughs> to borrow Miss Verena's turn of phrase, perhaps it just wasn't meant to be. Well, with the traveler around, I'm sure you'll have a chance to get to know each other at some point. <laughs> no. That's right. She's got more friends than she knows what to do with. I have a certain charm about me. <laughs> well, that's certainly true. Oh, that reminds me. If you get the chance, you should try and talk to Nervalette into loosening up a bit. 
Just tell him the Palais Marmonia isn't going to fall apart if he disappears for a few days. <laughs> he shouldn't keep himself cooped up all the time. Even clams open their shells to let in fresh water every once in a while, right? If he's really that much of a stickler for protocol, he can fill out a leave of absence request. He'd uh, have to approve it himself since he handles that sort of thing now, but you know what I mean. That does make sense. Seems like this gentleman is also in charge of something pretty important. He's the fair and impartial Udix, Udix, Udix of Fontaine, head of the highest court in the land. Otherwise known as the demon who controls all the paperwork in Fontaine. <laughs> hey, yeah. Uh, sounds like a pretty uptight sort of guy, all right. In my experience, a leader needs to be able to roll with the punches. That also includes knowing when and what to prioritize. It seems like your friend still has a lot of growing to do. If I remember correctly, he's already several thousands of years old. Uh, you're quite right, Miss Hu Tao. Oh! Oh? Traveler, Miss Farina. Those two individuals over there appear to recognize you. And I recognize them. Oh, it's Navi and Cloran! Hey, over here! We saw you all chatting over here, and we're wondering if we could join in. <clears throat> uh, please, excuse the interruption. <laughs> so polite! No apologies necessary. Any friend of the Traveler and Miss Farina is a friend of mine. Ah, straight to the point. I like it. Everyone circles around you and begins to introduce themselves. Who tells eyes light up when she hears about Clorin's profession? <laughs> what a quick explanation from Farina and Navia seemed to dispel some of her more misguided ideas. <laughs> It's getting late. If we want to catch a boat back before dark, we should probably get going. Indeed. Then, Miss Farina. Oh, uh, uh, yes? When are you planning to head back? Do you need us to escort you? Oh, um, I, I don't think that will be necessary. I mean, you're not my subordinate anymore. You don't need to look after me. Um, I didn't mean it that way. It's normal for friends to travel home together if they run into each other on the road. There are a lot of mountainous roads in this area. I imagine they'll be even harder to navigate after dark. Exactly! Just like in those ghost stories. <laughs> Eight paths converge in a wood. Beside them, an old house is stood. If you dare to go inside, not a soul will greet your eye. But, if you take a closer look, there may be something you mistook. A candle flickers to and fro, yet there is no wind to make it so. What is its secret? What could it mean? In this wood, where mystery <laughs> My dear Demuzo, uh, uh, ladies, no, uh, I mean friends, please take me with you. <laughs> of course. P Farina? <laughs> Gotta say, Farina, you are really quite the character. By the way, did I hear you mention that Clorand used to work under you? Then you must have also been a leader at some point. Uh, well, that's, uh, all in the past now. Besides, being a leader is hard. It wasn't the right job for me. <laughs> know how that feels. I prefer how things are now. I can come and go as I please, and get to enjoy the sweet taste of freedom. I see. Well, you've certainly picked an apt place to relax. Chao Ying Village is an exemplary choice. Well, have we all had a good time? Only the best. 
fact. <laughs> and I've learned a lot, too. Thank you so much, Miss Hu Tao and Mr. Zhongli. <laughs> it's fine. You thanked us more than enough already. The next time you're in this neck of the woods, I'll treat you to some dim sum in the city. Dim sum? Is that some kind of liyue term for snacks or desserts? They are a part of it. It's basically a table full of as much tea, sweets, and good company as you can manage. Oh, so it's basically a tea party. <laughs> Sounds great. Make sure to order the winter melon cake and the lotus flower crisp. They're so sweet and delicious. I'm a nose you'll love them. Ooh, okay. <laughs> I'll be looking forward to it then. Wait, but didn't you guys say you were here on vacation? How come you're all going home empty-handed? Without bringing home any souvenirs? Of course I am. I bought tons of fun things to bring home with me. A kite, a parasol, a little tin frog that jumps. Oh, and a stuffed toy of a mythical beast. Poor Ant is the one who didn't buy anything for herself. So, all you're bringing back with you is that tea? And some tea-flavored hard candies. They're for Sijuin. Chlorand isn't much of a shopaholic. Well, one of us has to practice restraint. Hey, I'm hardly reckless with my Mora. I'll have you know, all the purchases I made today were well within my budget. What about you, Farina? Me? Oh, well, I bought some tea, of course. I just had to try all the varieties recommended in the Steambird. Other than that, just some bits and bobs, you know. A little bit of this, a little bit of that. They should all be things I can use, I think. So you fell for a few marketing traps then. <laughs> uh, now Paimon's even more confused. If you buy that much stuff, where did it all go? Into one of Linny's magic packets? Oh, <laughs> actually, Monsieur Neuvillet took them with him. Ah, oh, so that's what Wait, what? How's he carrying it all? Why did he take them? He's not hoarding treasure, is he? He's a dragon, after all. <laughs> oh, and that's quite the imagination you've got there, Paimon. Although I think that's only a European dragon thing. I could be wrong. Monsieur Nervelet just saw the amount of bags we had and offered to take them back for us. I felt a bit bad at first, but, uh, I really did have a lot of stuff. <laughs> he even offered to deliver my gifts to the Fortress of Meripede for me once he's done with the day's work. Nervelet is a man of his word. If he says he can do something, then he means it. See, even Clorand was happy to take him up on his offer. If even his trusty subordinate agreed, then who was I to refuse? Wow, he seems like a real gentleman. Maybe he's not as uptight as I thought. If only the funeral parlor had an employee as thoughtful, proactive, and responsible as him. Especially the proactive part. Right, Zhang Li? <laughs> Indeed. Paran said Nervalette offered to deliver her gifts to Risley. So if we go to the entrance of the Fortress of Meripede, maybe we'll run into Nervalette! <sighs> but we don't know exactly when he'll show up. <laughs> I don't want to go there. <laughs> oh, that reminds me. A new year of work is about to begin. If there's anything you want to talk about, Zhongli, you know you can come to me. I'm all ears. Does the director have any concerns? It just seemed like you were a bit preoccupied today, and much less talkative than usual. He barely said anything other than, Is that so? And indeed. If you ask me, I'd say you're having a midlife crisis. You're getting to be around that age after all. <laughs> Is that so? Ugh. <laughs> I jest. Given its distance from the city, Chaoying Village enjoys a much slower pace of life. Surrounded by such peace and tranquility, 
I also seem to have developed a proclivity for inactivity. I apologize for making you worry. Ah, um, I see. What do you think, Traveler? Is this atmosphere putting you in a lazy mood too? Out of mind, out of sight. Different worlds should not collide. <laughs> um... <laughs> wow, you are getting really good at these kinds of lines. Indeed. <laughs> okay, I bet someone else is going to do this one. <laughs> oh, the other two are over there. Perhaps we could take a walk by a riverbed. Yes, there's a riverbed right here. Next to this dude. <laughs> Oh no, you're not supposed to do it. I wanna know what your serious look would play isn't any that much different than <laughs> his normal look. <laughs> Go on now, give me a serious look. Oh. <laughs> Melusines are beautiful creatures. Oh no! <laughs> they are the pride of Fontaine. Be sure to befriend them and cause them no harm. Exactly, new Shangli. sure that you've got all your belongings with you before we leave. If there's any souvenirs anyone still wants to buy, the time is now. Reliable as ever, Miss President. <laughs> what is that supposed to mean? Florian is right, though. You really are reliable. It's not what she's saying. It's the way she's saying it. I will say, but I never thought you'd be so easygoing outside of work, Florian. The tone of voice you use when you're working doesn't exactly make you seem like the type who enjoys interacting with people. Well, I try to keep my professional and private life separate. That includes my behavior. You take care now, traveler. Paimon. Don't worry, your partner is very strong. Ah, trying to act cool now, are we? <laughs> well, I guess it's not an act for you, is it? No, it's not. You are indeed quite strong. <laughs> it's been great talking to you all. I'm really glad I decided to come to Chaoying Village. Maybe we could go on another trip together sometime? <sighs> I knew you'd miss me. Oh, oh, okay. Gotta go look for me. Anyone else? I think that's it, right? There's that one. <sighs> Maybe this way? <laughs> it looks like I actually might have to climb a mountain if I do that. Ugh.
Oh, he did see the entrance. I guess this would be the entrance, huh? It's you. It has been some time since our last meeting. Few people frequent this location. Since I was able to conclude my work early for the day, I thought I might take a walk and avail myself of this area's peace and quiet. You call this early? Do you always work this late, Neverett? Strictly speaking, that depends on the agenda for the day. I am hardly bereft of time, however, so working late is of little consequence to me. Really? If you have so much time on your hands, then why did you only go to Chow Ying Village for half a day? Hmm? First, I should clarify that I was referring to my lifespan, rather than the time at my disposal on any given day. Second, I was unaware you possessed knowledge of my trip to Chow Ying Village. I see. Thank you for informing me. So, did you deliver the gifts? Yes, they have been safely delivered. <laughs> I have to hand it to Cloran. Just a simple gift delivery, and she has the great and mighty Udex at her beck and call. I was just passing through. It was merely an act of convenience. All right. Then I hereby confirm receipt of the goods on behalf of the staff of the Fortress of Merapi. A verbal receipt of confirmation? Is such a formality really necessary for a small matter such as this? Guess not. This quantity of tea, though, seems a little excessive for a gift, don't you think? Before you know it, they'll start accusing me of taking bribes. Ah, about that. Much of that is my own excess, I'm afraid. Oh? <laughs> Why? What happened? It was buy ten boxes, get half off. Oh, God. <laughs> ah, that explains it then. <laughs> he actually fell for it? Well, go ahead and leave them to me. I'll get through this stash as fast as I can. You have my thanks. Oh, there's something else I'd like to give to you. This is... a stone slate. Engraved with a symbolic design. Well, that is an apt description. It is, in actuality, a legal codex. A legal codex, huh? Hmm. Before the advent of modern writing utensils, information was recorded on stone slabs such as this. The law was no different. Oh... okay. Since ancient times, the scales of justice have symbolized the fairness and impartiality of judiciousness. As a tribute to that sentiment, this slate was designed after a traditional legal codex, and engraved with a symbol instead of text. During my travels recently, I chanced upon a roadside stall offering tourists the opportunity to try their hand at the ceramic arts. So I decided to have a go. We joked with Cloran some time ago about gifting you a legal codex. So, here you go. <laughs> ah, so that's what this is about. I did not expect you to remember it as well. In any case, I hope this can be considered as a reasonable attempt to join in on the banter. <laughs> it is a very good attempt. I suppose I shouldn't be surprised. Even your sense of humor centers around the law. That's an impressive level of commitment. A gift of this significance deserves to be put on display, and I know just the place. Front and center in the fortress's showroom. Ah, surely there's no need for such a grand gesture. Just kidding. I don't have anything like a showroom. But we do have a storage room. We can put it next to all the mechanical parts Sijuin has collected. And that sounds good to me. So that's what you were doing in Chaoying Village. Indeed. Of course, while I was there, I also took the opportunity to taste the local spring water. See? Told you. 
The aftertaste is much purer than what I have delivered to me in Fontaine. It stands to reason that the long-distance transport has a tendency to imbue the water with extraneous emotion. If you want to experience the true flavor, you simply have to go to the source. Perhaps I should organize some time off to do the same elsewhere. As they say in Leland, a balance between work and play is sure to keep your troubles at bay. <laughs> then we are of the same mind. It appears my desire is justified. If you say so, like, you know you don't have to justify a vacation, right? You can just take one. After all, you're hardly bereft of time. You can do whatever you like. You're quite right. I suppose I suffer not from a lack of opportunity, but rather a lack of inspiration. However, after reading a few articles about Li Wei's holiday traditions, the idea popped into my head and made itself quite at home. Seeing as I was free of responsibilities for the morning, I decided to depart at once. And how was it? Refreshing. My spontaneous outing seemed to inspire quite a few other spontaneous decisions as well. Take, for example, my foray into ceramics. At first, soil from the ground is granular and unforgiving, but have the right amount of water, and it becomes soft, moldable, and able to take shape. In the past, I never thought about how quotidian vessels were crafted, but now I have participated in their very making. This is also something I made today. Oh. What a big ladle? <laughs> That's a ladle? I thought it was supposed to be some long-necked sea creature. That was indeed one of my inspirations. It's amazing. The colors are really... also really matches your style. Really? You like it? <laughs> to tell you the truth, given your unexpected arrival, I find myself quite unequipped to give you the welcome you deserve. Around such an important holiday such as this, Human custom would dictate that gifts should be in order. But I'm afraid this is all I can offer. If you'll have it, that is. Can I really keep this? We made it by hand and everything. <laughs> that is precisely why it would do me such a great honor if you accepted. Then I accept. Thank you. You are most welcome. Happy Lantern Rite. Oh, that reminds me. <laughs> hmm. Approve a leave of absence request for myself. That sounds like it could easily lead to a vicious cycle of self-indulgence, something which couldn't be in further violation of protocol. But I suppose I understand her point. My proclivity to refrain from personal outings does in part originate from a sense of responsibility toward my duties. But it is also due to a lack of desire to engage in the human world. But now I see that the human world is indeed full of many interesting places to discover. I could have told you that. <laughs> Lantern Rite marks the start of the new year in Liyue. In the spirit of the season, then, I wish you a year of success as vast and endless as the open ocean. Um, I guess that's it. <laughs> I see the value in my oh. own work. But I also see the meaning in all the endeavors of the people of Fontaine. <laughs> you talk I too much. I will continue to take pride in fulfilling my duties. You just got finished talking about something else. <laughs> oh, I knew I should have taken the bird away. <laughs> um. Oh, it does have that. Okay. A little mermaid tail. This one doesn't have a tail. <laughs> it's so cute. <laughs> water comes in many flavors uh, to the discerning yeah. palate. <laughs> Mondstadt's water is crisp and pure, 
while water from Leo has an enduring aftertaste. There should be a minute in between Inazuma, each character says something. At least. Unlike any other. Sumeru's water, meanwhile, <sighs> has a rich and complex <laughs> flavor profile, but it must be savored patiently to fully appreciate it. 